I've stated many times I would never use an air fryer. I think I'd rather air fry a flip flop before I put food in there. So today, I'm asking the question if an air fryer can beat me in cooking. I'm gonna take the most popular air fryer recipes and pit them against traditional cooking techniques. If I win, I get to destroy this thing, which I have wanted to do for so long. With that being said, let's make this, shall we? We got three rounds of recipes that everyone thinks the air fryer does best. Crispy potatoes, wings, and yes, we're making these Korean style. And believe it or not, the one that's the most popular, salmon. We gotta win at least two out of these three rounds in order to, well, not be beaten by an air fryer. Round one, potatoes. And no, we're not frying our potatoes. For my version, I'm gonna prep the potatoes like so. First, large pot of water, something like seven to eight quarts should do it. Season generously with salt. Bring to a boil over medium high heat and add two pounds or 1.8 kilos of small Yukon gold potatoes. Cook for 25 to 30 minutes or just until fork tender or a uh, cake tester tender also. Drain your potatoes. Place it on a large baking sheet then use the flat bottom of a glass to smoosh the potatoes to about half an inch thick and flat like these. Cool completely then pop into your fridge overnight. The next day heat an oven to 450 Fahrenheit. Line a baking sheet with foil even if you hate it. Grease the foil lined sheet with an oil of your choosing. That could be vegetable oil, avocado oil, or animal fat. I don't suggest using olive oil because it might burn at this temperature. Add three to five smashed garlic cloves. Generously coat your potatoes with around three to four tablespoons of your oil. Top generously with flaky salt. Two to three small bundles of thyme scattered around. Maybe some more thyme, why not? Pop into the oven for 20 minutes. Flip and back in for six to eight more minutes or until beautifully golden brown and crispy. Serving is easy. Put it on a plate, maybe some extra finishing salt, hit it with a little bit of olive oil and finely chopped parsley. Now for the air fryer version, it's all about being easy. So we're not gonna do the overnight wait in the fridge that I know everyone's gonna complain about already. And instead cut two two pounds or 1.8 kilos of Yukon gold potatoes into one inch chunks. Add a small handful of thyme, cut with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. Toss that brother like you're tossing a salad. Hey, keep your mind out of the gutter. Oh yeah, and don't forget three cloves of smashed garlic. Preheat your air fryer to 375 Fahrenheit and pop them in for 10 minutes. Give them a nice shake in the basket and pop back in for five to 10 more minutes. Hear me out. We are following one of the most highly rated recipes we thought would be ideal for the air fryer. So the results are whatever they are. That being said, it's time to bring in our taste testers. It's a damn good potato. It's a potato, that's for sure. I think it needs some salt. I appreciate the softness. Uh, okay, I could smell your hand, man. Did you fart on it? No comment. Yeah. All right. I like that one more. I really enjoyed the crunch. I feel like I'm eating a potato taco. This one was really well seasoned. Mine's juicy. Juicy? Your potato's juicy. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I just got more crisp out of that one. It's about the same. A little bit crispier, but like, I'd say these are about equal. Two. Two. The second one had more salt, so two. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the time that it took to make the potatoes in the air fryer shocked me. I was not expecting it to go that quickly. 15 minutes, that's shockingly fast. So what did we learn? The time that it takes is worth it. But does that hold true for the remaining two? We'll see on this salmon. All right, we already have a good footing. Round two, salmon. I'll be honest, I feel like it's gonna be a slam dunk for me. Very simple. We're seasoning our salmon with the exact same uh, seasoning. You'll need one six ounce skin on salmon filet per person. We got a crew here, so I have a few of those. Pet those puppies dry, then in a small bowl, combine two teaspoons or eight grams of kosher salt, one teaspoon or four grams of garlic powder, half a teaspoon or two grams of sweet paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of fresh ground black pepper. Whisk that brother together till thoroughly combined, then lightly brush each piece of salmon with extra virgin olive oil to coat. Season generously with your seasoning mixture and well, I'm gonna grill mine. So heat one side of your grill to very high heat. I'm using Bijutan coals, but propane is fine. Once that thing is hot, heat the other side to low or off. There's no coals on the other side of this grill, so it's obviously off. Generously grease a small wire rack with cooking spray. Grease the skin of your salmon, also with cooking spray, and place in your wire rack that's separate from your grill grates. This way you can move all the fillets around your grill at once. It prevents sticking since the grates are cleaner and less superheated. Now let that sear over the hot side of the grill for three to five minutes, skin side down, and once the skin is crispy and lightly charred, flip and cook on the other side until you can see the cook come up through the salmon and reach an internal temp of around 120 to 130 Fahrenheit, depending on if you like it medium rare or medium. I went medium. That's actually it. Pull it off the grill and let it rest for like two minutes. Now for Mr. Air Fryer, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually shockingly simple. Same seasoning and preheat an air fryer to 400 Fahrenheit. Pop it into your air fryer for 15 minutes and uh, well, that's it. It's done and it looks pretty nice. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Regardless of which method you choose, of course you can pop that onto a plate straight up or you 
can make a little nice tartar sauce to serve it with by simply mixing together in a bowl, one cup or 220 grams of stainless steel, I guess. Nice, Josh, real nice. Anyway, one cup or 220 grams of mayonnaise, half a teaspoon or three grams of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons or 44 grams of sweet relish, one and a half tablespoons or 23 grams of finely chopped capers, one shallot, finely diced, one teaspoon or five grams of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons or seven grams of fresh dill, finely chopped, and salt and pepper to taste. Stir that together, bada bing, bada boom. Spread that onto a plate into a nice little circle. Lay your salmon on top, skin side up, and maybe add some fresh dill as well. Why not? Despite how shockingly easy the air fryer version is, it definitely does seem overcooked, but I'm not sure. It is looking a bit like a close one. Fingers crossed. Bring in the taste testers. Vikram, we switched out because Kendrick does not like fish. I promise Kendrick is alive. He's perfectly good. See, there he is. I'm upside down. Ladies and gentlemen. Do you like fish, Ulysses? I don't know, we're about to find out. Why is he here? Some good fish right there. I want more crispiness on the top though. I want a crunch. There is nothing special about it. It just tasted like salmon to me. Shout out to salmon. This one's very mushy. I'm gonna go with number one. I'm also going with number one. I got the crisp on the second one. I didn't the... get any crisp. Yeah. Mine just instantly dissolved, it just touched my tongue. Gone. I'm a big air fryer salmon person. I do it like every day. I will say I like the second one more because of the crisp. It had some more flavors in it. I could go either way. Yeah, they are remarkably close. Nope, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I didn't expect that. I can see why they picked that one because most people like their salmon overcooked. Mine was crispier, but whatever. So maybe for most people, an air fryer makes sense for salmon. But we still have one last round and this round is gonna determine who the real winner is. So let's find out. Round three, Korean wings. I absolutely have to win this. Not just for my ego, but because I also want to destroy this darn thing. Since our wangs are gonna get slopped up by the same gochujang sauce, we'll begin our story there. In a medium saucepan, add two tablespoons or 30 grams of light brown sugar, one and a half tablespoons or 24 grams of rice vinegar, two tablespoons or 33 grams of mirin, two tablespoons or 42 grams of honey, three tablespoons or 45 grams of ketchup, a quarter cup or 85 grams of gochujang, which is just a fermented chili paste. Get it at most stores these days. Two tablespoons or 30 grams of dark soy sauce. We'll scald that together, pop onto a burner, set over medium high, bring that to a boil, then reduce the temperature to low and simmer for five to eight minutes, just until thickened and glossy. Remove from the heat and allow to cool for one minute, then add three cloves of grated garlic, stir that in, let it cool completely, and then pass through a fine mesh strainer. That is a gochujang sauce right there. Now, regardless of which technique you go with, you're gonna cure the wings exactly the same. You'll need two pounds or 900 grams of chicken wings, both flats and drumettes. Don't come to me and tell me that you only want drumettes, please. You gotta have flats. I'm kidding, do whatever you wanna do, all right? Add two teaspoons or six grams of kosher salt, a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper, you can go light, you can go heavy. I think these do well with a nice amount of pepper. One tablespoon or eight grams of grated ginger, mixed together by hand until evenly distributed, then allow to sit for five minutes at room temperature and up to overnight covered in the fridge. Now for my version, toss your wings with one cup or 165 grams of cornstarch and listen. Previously, all the other recipes were definitely beat out by time, but I believe that my version, regardless of what happens here, is faster than the air fryer. So let's start our timer. Boom, we get a heavy bottom pot filled about halfway with vegetable oil heated to 325 Fahrenheit. Toss your wings generously with your cornstarch, shake off the excess, and add your wings in batches if your pot's too small. Fry until just barely cooked through in a pale golden color. Drain on a wire rack and repeat with all of your wings. Now, let's check our time. Okay, not bad. Increase the temperature of your oil to 375 Fahrenheit, add your wings back, and again, you may need to do this in batches, and fry until unbelievably crispy, golden brown, and utterly stunning like these. Oh, what's that? Look at the time. So with heating time and batches, you could assume maybe 12 to 15 minutes for all this. Remove and drain on a wire rack, toss with your gochujang sauce, to coat and lacquer so it shines in any light, even moonlight. Pop onto a plate, top with cilantro, and that's it. For your air fryer wings, it's a similar concept, except you're gonna add in half a cup or 80 grams of cornstarch. Toss them generously to coat, toss into an air fryer that's been preheated to 380 degrees Fahrenheit and cook for 15 minutes. You will definitely have to do batches if you're doing two pounds of wings. Halfway through, I flipped the wings for even coloring and added back in for another five to 10 minutes. Once they were done, they looked crispy, but nowhere near as good. Toss these with your sauce, pop into a plate, hit with cilantro, maybe a little bit of sesame seeds so we can tell the difference. And frankly, there's no way this air fried wing is gonna beat mine. I already beat it in time, so bring in the taste testers and let's see if we beat it in experience. Wing number one. And, okay. It's a good wing. That is a good wing. Chicken, very tender. Not a fan of the sauce, although it's very tasty. Not a fan of, wait, hold on. Really liked the sauce. It didn't have the crunch that I would want out of a wing, but overall it was cooked perfectly on the inside. Not a fan of the sweetness of it. Overall the chicken was great, but just that sweetness didn't do it for me. It's a good wing. Thank you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> wing two. 
honestly, doesn't feel that different. There's like a slight, no, it's uh, it felt about the same. Is this the same sauce? Yeah. <laughs> it's not about the sauce. This one's more crunchy, which I like. I thought it had a little bit more of a crunch, which I did like, and I like that it wasn't overly breaded. But here's the thing, I can tell that one was fried. I'm not pouring a vat of oil for that much of how better it was. It was like a minuscule amount, in my opinion. All right, so which one was better? I'm not pouring a vat of oil for that much. They were about the same. If they taste the same, how do I pick one? They're the same. We can give it to the air fryer. Yeah, they're the same. It's all down to Ulysses. There it is. I was expecting the wings to be unanimous. I mean, granted it was two out of three, so it's a win, but I can see how this has a place in a home and I might even keep this one for myself. Honestly, I think I will. Do you think it still works? Vikram, do you think I can still use this? Oh, I see. That was the problem. <laughs> Silly me.